My name is Linda Johnson. I'm the owner of Ashdown Forest Llama Park, uh, which actually our farm in partnership with my husband. We opened the farm in 1996, and here at the moment we have something like 100 llamas and 30 alpacas, which we breed and sell. Uh, we also operate as a tourist attraction. We have about 20,000 paying visitors a year, probably another 20, 25,000 who just come to use our retail shop and our coffee shop and conference centre. The time at which I got interested in, first interested in llamas and alpacas was probably in the mid-1980s. That sort of time, diversification was the real buzz in, in farming. People were going into deer, crayfish, worms, you name it. And the latest thing at that time was llamas and alpacas. Anyway, this article in Farmers Weekly was about a, a chap who was farming them down near Horsham. And I thought, hmm, maybe I'll go and pay him a visit. Well, anyway, I went to pay them a visit and I got completely smitten. And my husband started to say, what are we doing with all these llamas and alpacas? What, you know, they've got to start to earn their keep. He's quite happy about it, as long as they make a profit. <laughs> what do you do with a farm of poor grazing, 32 acres in, in this area? It's, it's impossible to do anything in mainstream farming to actually, you know, make a profit. Um, hence, people are turning to tourism, you know, really. Um, and so that was our idea, you know, to, to basically run it as a visitor attraction. The price of llamas has remained static probably for about the last 10 years. There's a potentially greater income to be made from breeding alpacas, but you need to put a huge financial investment into it. And to me, that's a fairly ris risky business. I suppose I'm basically happier having my money invested in bricks and mortar and something that's going to weather any storm and could be turned into a different sort of business. If llamas and alpacas go out of fashion, we could be farming wildebeest, you know, it, it, you know, it wouldn't really matter. One of the advantages of llamas and alpacas is that DEFRA hasn't really discovered them yet. DEFRA is the Department for the Environment, Farming and Rural Affairs. Or, if you read Private Eye, the Department for the Elimination of Farming and Rural Affairs. <laughs> so we, we don't have sort of any requirements to have movement certificates or, um, you know, we've got very little control by DEFRA. I mean, in fact, I think in many ways that's a bad thing because quite recently there's been um, cases of TB in, in um, llamas in Devon. Um, and DEFRA don't know how to handle it. You know, they, they really don't know what they're doing. Um, and it's crazy because, you know, people are moving llamas and alpacas around the country with no, you know, movement controls or anything. Um, so I think sooner or later DEFRA is going to realise that llamas and alpacas have got to be, you know, within their scope. But at the moment they're not. So that, that is an advantage, you know, if you don't really want to be involved with dealing with DEFRA. Well, I guess there's two favourites. Big Tom, who you may have met, who's an ex-stud male. He was a failed stud male, so he's now a gelding. But he is just very, very special. He's probably one of the nicest looking llamas I've ever seen. Um, and then there's Ralph, our chief PR person, who gets dragged out to um, talk to old ladies and groups of children and whatever. And it's just completely bomb-proof, and he's really, really gentle and kind. Now, he's amazing. It's, it, to watch him with a group of sort of elderly people or, or disabled people, he's just so amazingly gentle. It's, it's really quite amazing. If you got emotionally involved with them, with them all, you'd, you know, you'd be a wreck. <laughs> I, I guess it's what's regarded as a lifestyle business. I mean, it's a very pleasant place to live. The disadvantages are it's 24-7. Um, but we live in a very beautiful part of the countryside. We have fantastic views. Um, and I'm doing the thing that I really enjoy. So you don't mind that it's 24-7. But uh, and obviously, I don't have travelling to work. I don't spend three hours a day fighting the traffic. But I do work very long hours. Um, it's not as profitable as I would like it to be, but most livestock businesses aren't. Um, but it suits me. It suits me. Yeah, certainly.